Hey guys, welcome to my channel once again. Today we're going to talk about how you can buy a car in America for really cheap as a student and you can travel in style in a very affordable, inexpensive manner. So if you're interested to know how you can do that, hang on to this video. Hi, I'm Don Corey. I'm an executive at All right. So one thing I realized is when I came to the U.S. and I looked at, you know, transportation systems, I realized that if you're in like a city, a major city like New York or L.A. or San Francisco, it's much easier to use the public transit system. There are subways, there are buses and all of that. But the minute you go a little outside any major city, it's really hard. You need to have a car. In the U.S., the basic primary vehicle that everybody has is a car unlike like in india or china or philippines everybody has a motorbike or like a two-wheeler here everybody has a car and only if you can afford a second or a third vehicle then it's a motorbike or a two-wheeler because it's considered to be fancy um, so if you're studying and you're a little outside of the city you must invest in a car and i'll tell you why I literally got a Volvo S40 sedan, which is considered to be one of the most safest cars in the world because it's a Volvo, that to an all-wheel drive, for less than $2,000. And uh, when I sold it, I sold it for more than $2,500. And I'll tell you how I did it. So there are states in the US that have different, different uh, taxation policies. So I uh, studied in Boston, which is in the state of Massachusetts, and I just looked up uh, different states around Massachusetts and I realized that New Hampshire which is uh, in the north of Massachusetts actually does not have sales tax uh, on a car or even most of the other products that you buy so you literally save uh, around six to ten percent on just taxes um, so what I did was I started searching for used cars in New Hampshire and I selected two or three cars uh, for me to go and look and then I and I drove up to New Hampshire and uh, I found this Volvo there. Uh, one thing you got to be careful is you got to test the car really well. It doesn't matter if you're here or in your own country, right? Uh, you don't want to buy a lemon for a car. So, so I took this car to a mechanic close by in New Hampshire and I paid them $30 to inspect the car end to end. And they said, Ashish, the car looks really good except for like one gasket which is missing and it costs about $100. So I went back to the used car dealership and I said, I'll buy this car if you reduce the cost by $100 or $200. And they did that. And I literally got the car for $1,800. It was a really nice looking sedan. Uh, it had about 40,000 miles on it. Uh, very decent because in America, 40,000 miles is literally nothing. All the roads are so clean and nice that your car doesn't dam get damaged a lot. It can literally drive till about 150,000 miles without giving you any issue. So I got the car, I started driving it, I started using it. And what I realized is the price did not even depreciate. Two years later, I sold the car for $2,500. And there's two reasons for that. One is... Typically, cars depreciate only in the first three years here and they depreciate heavily uh, because Americans love to drive leased cars. So they go in, they buy a car, they use it for three years, they put about 30,000 to 40,000 miles on it and then they return the car back to the dealership. And then after that, the car is, uh, literally loses all, all its value by then. And by the time cars reach about $4,000 to $5,000 in value, after that, they literally don't go down at all. It just remains at that, uh, that pace for some time. So uh, if you get a car for that, in that range between like $2,000 to $4,000, you can get a decent student level car and you can now drive to your grocery store and drive every day to college and then literally sell it for the same price. Uh, the other thing happened is because I bought it in New Hampshire, now when I sold it in Massachusetts, in Boston, the value of the car was much higher, even though it was two, year old, two years older than when I bought it. But the value of the car actually was higher because it was Boston. So amazing. I actually made $500 and I drove a car for about 20,000 miles 
uh, over two years. Isn't that amazing? So think of it a little bit. When you're coming here uh, to study, also think of uh, your travel plans. Think of whether you really want to spend your money on Uber or cabs or anything else or just get your own car and drive it and sell it two years later when you start working or you leave the country for some reason, sell it, you'll actually not lose a lot of money, right? Insurance is pretty cheap because insurance for cars in the US, just like other places, it depends on the value of the car as well. So I literally spent about $40 a month in car insurance and uh, that's it. Fuel prices are so cheap. Uh, it's about $2.50 to $3 for a gallon of fuel in Boston and that's way affordable even compared to India. The, val the fuel prices are lower, the insurance costs are lower and the, the cost of a car is much lower. I was driving a Suzuki Swift back in India which is a small car uh, but then this Volvo which is a much bigger car, bigger brand was way like five times cheaper than the, the Swift. So that's, it's just funny the way it works, but as a student, you should just make use of that. That's it on this video. This is a much shorter one. Uh, I'll post more such videos, but if you want to know about anything else uh, regarding international studies, please post that in your comments or reach out to me. All right, guys, it's that time where I ask you to now like, share and subscribe the video. It's our tradition, right? So you've got to follow it. Uh, so thank you anyways for all the comments and good wishes that you guys post. It's really energetic uh, to share all these things with you guys and see what where you guys are and what you're up to. So good luck with your study abroad and see you in another video soon. Bye.